excited for the university, for the department, and more specifically for the football program, for Coach Rindle to take it to, uh, or continue the level that we built over the last uh, many, many years. So without further ado, the new Warhawk head football coach, Coach Jace Rindle. After seven great years, Kevin Bullis decided to hang up his whistle as the head coach of the University of Wisconsin Whitewater football team. Thursday, February 9th, assistant head coach and former UW Whitewater All-American Jace Rindle was named head coach of the UW Whitewater football team. A native of Cambridge, Wisconsin, Rendell graduated from UW-Whitewater with a bachelor's in physical education in 2010. After Rendell's four years of eligibility, he still had love for the game, so he decided to start helping while finishing up his undergrad degree. You can preference this how you want. It's a watch, it's lost in the barn, and you want to be calm to be able to hear the tick of the watch. All right, so a boy and a grandpa, grandfather gives him a gift. This watch is from the 1800s, very special to the family. Uh, it was at a grad party and the boy's playing in the hay barn and then all of a sudden loses it. He starts freaking out. Everybody's going crazy, throwing hay around, trying to find it. He finally works up enough courage to go tell his grandfather that he lost the watch after looking for a couple hours. And then his grandfather's, it's all right. He walks in there and just says, everybody be quiet. We just calm. You can hear the watch tick, tick, tick. So the, the metaphor of the story is in adverse situations, how can we calm ourselves to hear the tick? So Coach Leipold, the head coach at the time, gave me the opportunity to help out that spring ball after I got done playing and then help out in summer camps. And that, that I earned an opportunity to actually be the linebacker coach that following year. And then uh, once I started Coaching, being on staff, I fell in love with it and knew that was exactly what I wanted to do. Growing up, sports was something Rendell gravitated to because he had two older sisters, Mackenzie and Caitlin, who competed in sports, and his mom, Diane, was a huge sports fan. Um, they were going to be seniors. He had a very close friend of his, Dustin Zulsdorf, that was um, killed in a... Um, motorcycle accident and that senior year this group of boys jace has been a gifted athlete he he uh i think from his dad who's very athletic uh, my family was athletic um he has been blessed with the gift of, of athleticism and but that senior year changed that group of boys their football season went from two wins the year before to going undefeated and each game was dedicated sorry was dedicated to Dustin and um, Joe Parrish was their head football coach and these group of boys in this small town of Cambridge just came together and um, were behind the parents supported the parents every game was dedicated um, to Dozer was his nickname and it, it was just an amazing thing to see a community come together and grieve and support this family. No one wants to lose a child at age um, 17. Like any other head coach, Coach Rindo has a couple of goals for the team and himself. For myself, probably is 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 getting more organized with a plan for each practice uh, from a leadership and a communication standpoint. Um, I think I'm always trying to be, be a better communicator and be more organized. That's something I'm constantly trying to improve. You know, for our team, I think it's, you know, coming out of spring ball, you're really trying to find out who can play, who can you trust, and then also, you know, where are the deficiencies on the team? Maybe where do we need to really improve? Being at the practices, you could feel and see the intense yet exciting energy from the players to the coaches. You could tell that the team stood behind Coach Rendell and his goals. I'd say the practices right now compared to how they used to be were they're a lot more intense as far as getting from station to station, drill to drill. Um, the length of the practices themselves aren't very long, but just the tempo and the pace of practices and the energy, Coach Rindle does a great job of emulating and making sure everybody's always locked in and doing what they're supposed to be and not day to dallying around. 
high intensity, a lot of fun. Uh, guys are flying around, the music's blaring always, guys are singing, but it's always laser focused and high intensity. It's full of energy, full of energy, fast paced, quick. Uh, focusing on the little things, I feel like, you know, there's a lot of things when it comes to football where it's all mental. And he, they put us in, he's been putting us in a lot of positions where it's more mental drills, you know what I'm saying? Fast speed, fast speed, fast pace, fast tempo. Juice that he brings, right? A, a spunk that he brings to practice. Um, you know, he's a pretty energized guy. I refer to him as like the energizer bunny. He's got a lot of energy and that shows at practice. Um, you know, nothing, no job's really too big or small for him. You know, you see him spotting balls, you see him doing all that stuff at practice. Um, but as a coach on staff, you know, it, it is something that he does demand a lot of us and the players. Um, but that's not to say that in a bad way. That's, a, a, to me, a good thing, right? Because we do hold ourselves to a high standard. Um, and he does hold us to that standard, which, you know, for someone that wants to be competitive and work at the highest level, you know, I really do appreciate that about him. Um, you know, so that comes with a lot of urgency and, you know, from, from you know, how we organize practice, being clean with it so that we can be efficient through that. Um, you know, I think that's something that um, we definitely get from him is, you know, making sure that everything's clean and there's urgency at practice. But Coach Rendell Corval is our love, toughness, discipline, and humility. He lives and coaches from these vows. He doesn't just look at the football player as an athlete. He actually cares about the player's life outside of football and tries to build a relationship on and off the field. The one of them coaches that, you know, you're willing to run through a wall for. You can tell he really care about his players and he mean what he said. But anytime you see Coach Rundle, you know, he dab it up, he hug you, uh, you know, ask you anything you need to know. If you ever felt like you needed to go to Coach Rundle, I personally went to him a couple of times just, you know, just chop it up. The way he's going around practices, the way he comes to lift, always ready, prepared, um, not necessarily always building like the on the field relationships, but also asking like the personal relationships about family and just hobbies we have outside of school and just really being able to connect to us, um, not from a player's pers only a player's perspective, but also a head coaching perspective. He's, he's very good. He cares a lot about his players and he wants the best out of them. And in order to do that, he holds people accountable and demands the best out of you. And so during the off season so far, he's had a bunch of coaches lead like extra meetings this semester. So uh, we've, we've had a bunch of meetings where we get to have conversations with the coaches. I mean, his office is always open for players to come in and talk to him. Um, you know, he sends out text messages, checking on people, making sure they all good. Even though this is Coach Rendell's program, he also cares about his staff and their opinions. You know, he's always open to, you know, if we have different ideas, we have different things we think, you know, that maybe we should be doing in terms of practice plan or whatever. Um, he's great about us being, you know, bringing those ideas to the table, always willing to listen. You know, at the end of the day, like, it, you know, it, it's his program, right? But we have, you know, we have a ton of say and he believes in us and he trusts us to, to do our jobs um, and bring up ideas and, and you know, maybe you know, you know, bring different things to the table that, you know, maybe he's not thinking or whatever. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, obviously he signs off and everything, but, but uh, you know, it's a collaborative effort. And uh, I think that makes it great because we all, nobody's afraid to share ideas or bring up different ideas because we know that, you know, it's, it's all gonna come from a good spot, so. It's very organized, very detailed, right? We never go into a meeting where there's not like a very structured thing that we're gonna be talking about. Um, and then he's definitely very open-minded and um, you know, likes other opinions, um, you know, likes to hear different points of view and um, you know, is really pretty open to um, you know, other ideas, gives a lot of us um, control over um, things and gives us ownership of you know, different pieces of the program. Even though coaching can be fun, there's a lot of unexpected challenges you have to deal with day to day. Just the amount of stuff that just can pop up throughout a day. Um, you, you really, and I'm an early riser, so I get up early and get things done so that I can have a little bit more latitude throughout the day. But I mean, you might have a player that walks in your office and then, you know, two hours later, he's walking out. And, um, you know, that's just part of it. You gotta be there to help and, and mentor your, your players.
I really enjoyed learning more about Jay Sarandle and hearing all the good things about him from his family to his coaching staff and the players. I'm really excited to see how Jay Sarandle and the Warhawks season goes this upcoming season. Thank you for watching.